join us this time for the first video in our Copenhagen series. Visiting some of the most popular tourist spots and some less well-known historic neighbourhoods. We try some local delicacies and amazing restaurants with great locations. Plus we stay in a unique hotel with bags of character and the only rooftop pool in Copenhagen. So come explore with us. Whether you arrive in Copenhagen Airport Terminal 2 or 3, you will exit at this point where the two terminals meet. Taxis can be found on the right, but just follow the concourse to the end for all your other transport options. Here you can buy a city pass which will allow you to use the rail, metro and buses from the self-service machines. Simply choose your language and follow the incredibly easy instructions. A small city pass will cover all of the major areas of Copenhagen and we went for a three day pass that worked out about 25 pounds or 30 US dollars. And there are plenty of English speaking staff if you need a hand. So once you've successfully got your ticket, you now need to decide what is the best way into town. As a general rule, if you're staying near Tivoli or Central Station, then the best thing to do is just take the train and take any train to Copenhagen Central. Though some may do one or two stops, ones may go direct. Very simply head down the, uh, the walkways there. If you're staying up more towards Niehaven and that end of town, it may be better for you to head up to the escalators up there. There you will find the metro. Now the metro will do more stops, it'll be slower into town, but it will then put you much closer to where your hotel is. So, depends where you're staying. We opted for the train as our hotel was right by Central Station and the boards were very clear with trains into the city departing from the platforms to the left of the ticket machines. If you're staying anywhere near Tivoli, this is a quicker and more affordable way of getting into town, only taking about 10 minutes, with the station directly opposite the historical theme park. This was extremely convenient for us as our hotel was immediately out of the station and along the street to the right. So we were quickly able to check in, drop our bags, freshen up and then get out to explore for the afternoon. So literally straight down the road from our hotel, right next to Central Station there as well. And now we are off to feed the wife because we do not want a hungry wife on our hands. So typically food hall. We visited Copenhagen in early March and Tivoli Gardens is closed seasonally between the Christmas and Easter holidays. The food hall though remains open year round and is easily accessible from the street when the park is actually closed. There is a great selection of places to eat but we were here to try something authentically Danish. Smørsbrød is a traditional open sandwich and you will find this in eateries all over Copenhagen. So Tivoli food court for our first smurz fruit with customary beer. Lunch with a hot date. And a look a view out to Tivoli to boot as well. So after we've eaten we decided to actually try and figure out what we just ate. So um, we basically had a chicken mayo, we had, what was the other one? We had a roast pork. pork. Your other favourite was? I had like a meatball um, one which had like a potato salad on top. Like a sausage meat wasn't it? Yeah. And the other good one was the roast beef one which came, came with a curried pickled mustardy sort of veg, just cauliflower. That was really really good as well. Uh, beers as well, mine seems to have grown. I think someone's switching them out, so I think someone's trying to get me drunk. Um, but first, Smurzbird, what do you think? I actually really enjoyed it. Really good, definitely yeah. be having them again this trip. Definitely. So the weather is absolutely incredible. Perfect Scandinavian blue skies, fresh out, a bit chilly, but absolutely amazing. But we managed to come to Tivoli when it's closed in the winter months. But check this out, it absolutely looks like a ghost town here. But the uh, iconic Neem Hotel, the sort of uh, craziest theme park hotel, literally walked straight out into the park there as well. Tivoli Gardens dates back to 1843 and is generally open between March and September 
though does have three week seasonal openings at both Halloween and Christmas. As always, we'll put links in the description so you can check it out. But now though, we needed to walk off our lunch. Though did not venture north into the city as we'd be covering this on the following days. So instead, we took a walk around the perimeter of Tivoli Gardens, heading back to our hotel to get ready to go out to a completely different part of the city that late afternoon. We chose to stay at Villa Copenhagen as had a great central location, but most importantly, an utterly unique character. The building dates back to 1912 and was formerly the Danish Post and Telegraph Office. What we love though about this hotel is how they've taken the architectural heritage of the building and mixed it with a contemporary feel, including this amazing glass atrium over what would have been the central courtyard. We love this central space with its blend of old and new, which during the daytime was flooded with light, but is equally as impressive at night when the atrium is floodlit and the bar is a great place to sit and have a drink. Exploring around the hotel, you'll find great touches like these antique elevators and faithfully restored staircases leading to an enclosed balcony in the atrium from where in the evening a DJ played, adding to the ambience of the hotel. So, oh, Villa Copenhagen, room 1153 is a standard room but king please excuse the cases but we've got a sliding door here room's very compact but bathroom is absolutely fantastic great shower there and then round into the room itself don't think that me and the wife are now sleeping in separate beds it's a very scandinavian thing to have two separate quilts and then out inward facing room so a bit quieter towards the central courtyard and that great dome and then up to this amazing architecture. Now we did not eat at the hotel as had made other reservations during our stay but options included their large scale restaurant for breakfast in the basement, their on-site bakery, T37 a more informal bar doing sharing plates and their most upscale option Brasserie Contrast. The hotel is also just a short walk from the Vesterbro Meat Packing District, which has been reinvented into a collection of quirky restaurants and craft breweries. An absolute heaven for foodies. We caught the metro one stop south from Central Station and a short 5-10 to 10 minute walk brought us into the historic district of Carlsberg Bien. This unique neighbourhood is the site of the original Carlsberg Brewery, but is a delight of stunning architecture and quirky character. The area is visually stunning with grandeur buildings, rooftop statues, and oozes history from the heyday of the brewery, where you can see the original brewing tanks through the windows. In the tower above, you'll find statues of Carl Jakobsen one of the founders of Carlsberg Brewery and his wife Otilia looking over the site. And below you'll find these imposing elephant statues whose heritage links back to the nearby Copenhagen Zoo, whose real life elephants have been paraded through these cobbled streets. But now these huge statues pay homage to them, guarding the entrance to this fabulous district. The brewery and visitor experience were actually closed during our visit due to renovations. The site has since reopened to the public as not only a brewery tour, but also an interactive experience with new multimedia elements. And we are looking forward to returning so we can bring you another video on their great enhancements. This is just a great neighborhood to explore finding the historic elements merged in with the new. Like the Hotel Ottilia, named after Carl Jakobsen's wife, where the facade of golden circles represents the bottom of beer bottles, and where we were heading to the rooftop for dinner, so we could appreciate the surroundings from a different perspective. This hotel's modern design has been blended 
with its historical character and quirky touches where the rooms have oversized porthole windows with curved lounges built into them to chill in. The hotel also sits above the upscale airy spa whose basement spa pools sit in the vaulted brick archways of the flooded cellars. The hotel has incorporated unique design elements such as these tanks and architectural lighting and certainly has a unique style if looking for a hotel in this part of the city. We though were heading to the top floor and to Tramonto Rooftop, a highly recommended Italian restaurant with commanding views all over the historic Carlsberg Bien district allowing us to get a bird's eye view of the ornate statues and rooftops and we timed perfectly with sunset so it would have been rude not to have a sundowner so we respectfully obliged before we headed to take our window seat to check out the amazing view from both our table and the outside terrace before the sunlight faded and though we may have been the early birds the restaurant soon filled up as the evening went on and was pleased to say that the food was as equally as impressive as the setting including a fantastic dessert that was like a huge Ferrero Rocher and although we stayed on into the evening the sunset rounded off a great day in this fabulous part of the city that is not to be missed. So here we have normal Copenhagen going about its day-to-day -day business. And then we have this. The hotel is unique in Copenhagen in having this rooftop pool and I cannot lie, it was a big reason why we actually booked this hotel. I've left Lorraine in bed. Wish me luck, going in. Actually, it's not too bad, but getting in is wasn't the issue. I think getting out is going to be the problem, so good luck with that one. This 25 meter heated lap pool is exclusive hotel guests only and is complimentary to use. However, you do need to book a slot on the website to reserve your time to use it. The pool also stays open late, 10 o'clock during the week and 11 o'clock at the weekends and is even more impressive at night, so check out part two of this video where we go for a late swim. Now we have the bad dash to get to the sauna before I get a little bit too chilly. As you can see there are plenty of tables and chairs and actually even a bar which I imagine is open during the summer months, but certainly not at this time of year. I also booked the first slot of the morning at 7am but as you could see other people began to filter up as the morning went on. Now that is much better. And as the Danes are so eco-focused I'm pleased to say that the hotel heats the pool from its excess heat from its cooling systems. Oh, nice sauna, feeling a lot more toasty now, but absolutely crazy. It's a couple of degrees above freezing really, everyone's out dressed for winter. And I'm up here. Suitably invigorated, it was now time to head out and explore the other side of the city. Well, first full morning, we are out and about, as you can see. Check out the Swansea Hotel, and we are heading off down a ladder way to the metro. Now there are cycle lanes everywhere in Copenhagen and as you can't hear them coming would be very easy to step into their way so be careful. So 
going to start our sites here for the day. So have you um, bought your um, Copenhagen guidebook, babe? No. No? Have you read it? Part of it. <laughs> Which bit, the cover? You're my guidebook. Oh, okay, good. I'm glad you admit that now. I've got you a little presser. Oh, I was just giving you a map. got you a little map from the concierge. Thank you. Idiot's Guide to Copenhagen. <laughs> That's what I need. <laughs> so, Copenhagen Metro 101, beginner's class, with Lorraine Daly. So we are at Copenhagen Central Station. Assistant, please. Copenhagen Central Station. Cool. And last night we went out to Carlsberg BN. And we got sure. off on the red line here. Yep. And today we are heading uptown. So we're going which way? This way. Yep. How many stops are we going? Five stops and we're going to Ostport. Osterport, whatever Close it enough. is. Yeah. Kill the Danish language, but you know, we know where we're going. Adventures on the Copenhagen Metro. Someone's got their big girl pants on. She's being tour guide today. Wish us luck. Been over here by the Metro. Gonna come in here by the Swedish Church. Circle around, come in through the fort itself. Then we're gonna go out to the famous little mermaid and then down the harbour front down to the harbour. It was only a short walk from the metro to Castellet, which translated means citadel, which is an extremely well-preserved pentagon fort and with its own windmill. Surrounded by moats, it is guarded by bastions in each corner. And entering through the King's Gate, soldiers remind you that this is still an active military site. So if you're enjoying this video, remember to look out for part two but we also ask that you please hit that like and subscribe button. We really appreciate the support and will help us bring you even more videos like this in the future. So here we are inside the fort at Castellet. It's like a different world here. It's just over from the Little Mermaid statue. So definitely worth taking a little detour to it. Just literally just outside the city. You can't believe this is all here. The site is completely free to visit and if you follow through to the north gate you can circle round to the Little Mermaid statue. The statue itself is not particularly large, however what is is the crowds jostling for position to get their selfies at the statue. It can frankly be a bit of a bun fight, but you can't come to Copenhagen without seeing this iconic landmark. So, done a complete circuit of the fort, out to the Little Mermaid, finishing up on the waterfront. But unfortunately, someone didn't get the memo and tell them to put the fountain on for our arrival. So, not quite sure if it's because we've just been to the fountain with uh, no water in it and a little, making us feel a little bit dry but we've just spied a nice little waterfront restaurant there so I think it might be time for a wipe. Now for March we had been exceptionally lucky with the weather so although a bit fresh was a perfect spring day with bright blue skies so it was a great setting for a much needed pit stop. It could have been very easy to while away some time here in the sunshine However, it was time to press on further down the waterfront and make our way towards the Royal Palace. The weather is amazing. Opera House, just taking a stroll down the waterfront. And now we're going to cut through go up to the Royal Palace. Now there are a number of palaces in Copenhagen, but this Emilienborg Palace is the actual residence of the Danish royal family. You can book to see some of the staterooms at the palace, which costs 120 kroner, so about £13 sterling or $15 US. And if you miss the changing of the guard at 12 noon, don't worry, as the procession actually comes from Rosenberg Palace, including a marching band, and marches through the city centre. So check out part two of this video where we caught it by the Rune Tower. And following through the palace courtyard, you will come to Frederick's Kirk, or otherwise known as the Marble Church. Entrance to the church is free. However, be prepared to work around church services, especially on Sundays. And of course, a donation to the church would not go amiss. They do also conduct 
tower tours of the dome, which only cost 50 kroner, but only happen at the weekends and once a day at 1 p.m. So unless you are particularly interested in climbing this specific church and dome, there are no shortage of viewpoints you can experience around Copenhagen, many for free and many with a much higher vantage point. Some of which we tackle in the next video, so stay tuned. Cool, so Gail did good today. Left here today from the hotel, through the central station, right by Tivoli. Got the metro, five stops up, up to here, and then came out through Castellet. Had a wander through the old fort and then out to the Little Mermaid. And then we've taken a walk along the waterfront down here, out to the Royal Palace, out to the Marble Church. And we're now just by the Admiral Hotel. We're about to go off and have a little drink, which for a change, over in Niehaven. So, one of the hotels we were looking to stay at, if you fancy being up more towards Niehaven, this is the Copenhagen Admiral Hotel. It's a lovely hotel, full of character, based in the old mill house out on the dock. So well worth a visit if you fancy this end. If your time in Copenhagen is limited and you won't have the scope to visit some of the neighbourhoods such as Christiana, Vesterbro or Carlsbo Bien, this could be a great choice for you. It is set back in a side street a couple of hundred yards from Niehaven. It is easy walking distance to all the palaces of Emilienborg, Christiansborg and Rosenberg. And also a short stroll to the Little Mermaid. The hotel is full of character including all these exposed beams which also feature in the rooms. The hotel is also located on the harbour front. So for an obvious upgrade you will be able to get a room with a great water view. Plus many of the hotel's venues also back onto the harbour front including this restaurant Salt that comes also highly recommended. The food scene in Copenhagen is extremely innovative with the award-winning Noma but also now Geranium and the Immersive Alchemist. However, be prepared to book these way in advance and you better have deep pockets. But look out for our next episode where we visit a Michelin-starred new Nordic cuisine restaurant. But for now, our plan was to grab a drink on the picture postcard waterfront of Niehaven. This picturesque and colourful fishing village has now evolved into a tourist hotspot full of bars and restaurants on the harbour front. So the perfect spot to sit and watch the sun go down with a drink. <laughs> And as is very easy to do in Niehaven, watching the world go by, drinks turned into dinner and day turned into night. And as the sun sets, the lights come on and everyone cozies up with warm blankets, patio heaters and fire pits. Which is where we leave part one, but look out for the next video where we visit palaces, climb towers and eat even more food at a top-notch restaurant. So check out more of our videos here. Thanks for watching.